Welcome to the Open to Hope show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host. Dr. Heidi Horsley. Oh, Heidi, we've got a show today. You know what I love to do? Yoga. Yes, yoga was transformative for you after Scott died. Right, I've been doing yoga for 30 years and it's been an amazing thing. It has. Yeah, and we have a wonderful guest on our show. You're gonna love him because he does something called grief yoga. Mm -hmm. And we, we call it the show today, Yoga is a Fuel for Healing. I love that. I kind of got that off of his website, a fuel for healing. It really, really resounds with me. How do you want to introduce our guest? I, I would love to because like you said, yoga also helped me and has changed my life. And I am definitely, I definitely when I see my clients, I am very stern, I'm, I tell them go and do yoga if you've had a loss. Mm -hmm. And Paul Denison, Deniston, Deniston? That's right. Paul Deniston, there we go. He is our guest today and Paul, as you said, lost his sister Ella to cancer two years ago. Wow, well, only um, two years ago. Yes, only two Not years ago. Long. And before she died, though, you created grief yoga. Was that before her death or after? Oh, it was before her death. Before her death. This grief yoga mom is phenomenal. Paul, I love it because you've taken all different types of yoga. I do. And you have created your own grief yoga. Yes. You've got laughter in there. You've got every, every kind I can imagine. I was reading it on your site. Um, you teach all over the world. Mm -hmm. You teach at the Kripalu Center in Esalen. Mm -hmm. And you have an online course called Healing Through Movement and Yoga. Mm -hmm. Esalen's in my neighborhood. Kripalu's in sort of yours. You have to yeah. drive away, but I love those areas. Yes. Yeah, yes. It's and, wonderful. Uh, and, and after we, we interview Paul, we are going to close the show with Megan Poy singing Light After Loss. All right. Fabulous. So welcome to the show, Paul. Thank you for having me. Thank so great you. to have you on. Thank you for helping us to find hope after loss. Uh, it's certainly what I'm trying to do within my classes. Yeah. Now tell us, um, your sister had a six-year uh, battle yes. with cancer. Yeah, when she was 37, she uh, shared with me that she had been, um, she had just had her second child, uh, her third child, actually. And she uh, shared with me that, that she was diagnosed with um, advanced stage four cancer. Wow. It was a very aggressive cancer, um, but she said, I am a fighter and I am not going to, I, I'm gonna stay alive for my children and I'm gonna do whatever it takes. And so when she first told that to me, I, I was like, I expected her to die shortly after. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of the things that I was amazed about was how strong she was, what a warrior she was. And I know that she wouldn't even share some of the challenges that mm -hmm. she was dealing with, mm -hmm. but uh, her will to survive for her children was so inspiring to me. Um, and I, I, you know, I, with my sister, I, she, she was my best friend mm -hmm. growing up. We yeah. were, you know, I was her older brother and it really hit me, um, especially now uh, during the second year as I looked back at pictures, I'm like, no wonder it was so challenging because she was my buddy. She, right. you know, all she was your go-to person. She was my go-to person. That's big. Yeah, and so it's still, it's still hard. Yeah. Um, and I, um, but I, I speak to her, mm -hmm. you know, I and I, I know that she's in my heart and um, I, I I'm trying to keep her memory alive now, mm -hmm. even after her death. You know what? It gets easier, doesn't it, Heidi? The memories. Oh, the memories? Yeah, they're, yeah. They're easier to access, yes. I think I, after, you know, sometimes early on the grief gets in the way of fully going and seeing someone three-dimensionally in your head. Mm -hmm. But as you get further along in your journey, you get memories you forgot you had. Mm -hmm. Because I know people are afraid they're gonna forget early on. Right. Yeah. And actually the opposite I think happens. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So this is, this is really big to lose a sibling. And, and Sometimes, you know, also um, before I teach a yoga class, mm -hmm. um, I will actually dedicate the class to her. Oh, mm -hmm. I love that. And it's amazing sometimes just, it will be spiritually uplifting for me. Um, but it will also allow me to um, address some of the hurt and the pain that I still am, am processing and working through about it, too. It gives me space to allow it to move through. Mm -hmm. I mean, specifically, one of the things that I was drawn to with yoga 
was first off, I believe the heart of what yoga is about is, is it, it compassion. And I really believe that having compassion within our grief is so important. Um, compassion for self. For self. And the body. Mm -hmm. yes. And what our body has gone through. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to ask you, Paul. What, why does yoga help people when they're grieving? I believe it helps them be, become present. Okay. Um, I think that a lot of the times in grief, we're either stuck in the past or we can have fear and anxiety of the future. Mm -hmm. And the heart of what yoga is about is a compassionate practice on being present. I think a lot of the times within grief, what can happen is, is that we can get stuck in our mind. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that that body connection is very important because when we don't feel feelings fully, it gets stuck in the body. The body remembers pain and trauma. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. and, and we have to, you know, the, these issues that we have in our tissues, we have to move them through. And so mm -hmm. doing it in a compassionate way is very important. And I believe that's what yoga is. Now, and I also know that there are many different forms of yoga that you can um, approach. Um, whether it's like a power vinyasa, vinyasa class or a restorative class or laughter yoga or kundalini yoga. I started to, during that time period, um, really just become a teacher in all of these different branches. Now, is, when I you say this. the time period, why your sister was going through her treatment, when While did you start? my sister, it started really when she shared with me um, that she uh, had been diagnosed with advanced stage four cancer. But also at the time, and I, I had become I, a yoga teacher at that time. Mm -hmm. But right at that time too, I was also processing um, the uh, my 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 um, dog was getting very old and mm -hmm. passed and, and getting ready to die. Um, I had also um, dealt with an injury within my arm, and I had broken mm -hmm. my wrist. Um, I had had a dear friend pass away, mm -hmm. and I also, my uh, uh, stepson was also um, passing away too. And so wow, there was, there was a lot, of, a lot wow. of grief that was happening. All at once. At once. And so within grief yoga, what I wanted to do, to do basically was to create a bit of a journey mm. that allowed us to become, first off, aware of the present moment. I wanted us to use... Um, first, and also become aware of where, where are we holding the grief in our body. Um, mm -hmm. Move from the head into the body. Mm -hmm. And then after that, to start to use um, expression. And with expression, I use movement, breath, and sound. I think a lot of the times we might have a hard time articulating what the, the struggle is about. Mm -hmm. And so within it, yeah. I use a lot of sound to start to move it through. Because it's easy for us to get stuck up in our throat. Mm -hmm. After that, it comes into... What kind of sound? Give me a sound. The sound can be... Huh, huh, right there kind of, huh. is a powerful right okay, there. Okay, so I could be sitting there and just go... Huh. That's right. That's right. Okay. Sometimes if you want, if you'd like to do this with me, you can actually place your hands right here on your belly. Mm -hmm. This is where your core strength is. Mm -hmm. And just take a deep inhale. Exhale. Push your hands to your spine and powerfully... Huh. <sighs> Okay. Good. Again, inhale deeply. A little bit more. Exhale with sound. <sighs> okay. Good. That feels good. Yeah. 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 Part of the reasoning behind that, too, is our breath gets really shallow within mm -hmm. grief. Mm -hmm. And so we want to breathe from the diaphragm, too. We also, I think that because grief is so exhausting, we want to connect to our core strength, too. And I just recognize a lot of people have a hard time struggling within the throat. Yeah. And so just using sound helps to move mm, it through. I like that. You know, um, I know because I have a nursing background and the, the sympathetic nervous system, you know, the fight and flight is all up here. Mm -hmm. And the repose and repair and relax is all down here. And that's where you're getting the blood flow down here. If that's you want right. to look at it from that point of view, yeah. That's right. Wonderful, yeah. I'll tell you another exercise that, that mm -hmm. is very strong mm -hmm. within my classes. A lot of the times people want to know why did this happen? Why did my child mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. to die? Yeah. Why them? Why me? I have this exercise I do in the class where I'll have people just come out and just say the word why. Oh, and sometimes... Why. But you know what I'm going to say to you? Yeah. You just said why my child had to die. Siblings 
Mm -hmm. Why do you say about why the did, siblings? Right. Yeah. Why do the siblings have to know? No, but what do you say about siblings being ignored? Oh, you mean that we got her off non acknowledged within yeah. our grief? Yeah, and our grief is often minimized. So I like the, because sometimes we are, we're focused on our parents. Right, right. So I like the idea of saying why for us too and owning it. Absolutely, that's absolutely. Good. Yeah. yeah. So you have the whole class do it together. Okay. <laughs> you that's what I do. Do you? I, is that what you do? I do. And you I know what? That. Sometimes what I'll see people why? do too is is what they'll do is, is they'll actually raise their hands up and say why like this. That's uh -huh. powerful. Because it actually gives them an opportunity to even show some frustration yes. or anger at Love God. Yeah, and yes. you know, I mean, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross would talk about how it's okay to be angry at God. God can take it. Yeah. And sometimes people feel like they're not allowed to do it. Yeah. So within this space in the class, it gives them the, the opportunity to say it and things can start to I'd move through. I'd love to hear a whole sibling group do why together, I Heidi. Know. And, it's and powerful. Because, and the permission. Because, yeah, the permission to, to grieve. Because yes, siblings, and to be, and to be uh, angry. How's your and, mother? Right, exactly. And to be angry and to be frustrated and to, to want to know why. Mm -hmm. Why yeah. did your sister finally die after six years and she was so valiant in her struggle, which is amazing. Yeah. And the know? thing is, is I don't think that we'll ever fully know why. Yes. I do think it helps us to express it. Mm -hmm. But it's then we have to move into then the how. Okay. How do we? How do I move on mm -hmm. that will honor her life? Mm -hmm. How yeah. can I keep her memory alive? Yeah. That's and for me, teaching grief yoga, whether it's to cancer support centers, um, maybe and saying this is for you, Ella. Mm. That's something that I can do. But I, I do know that. It's important to express the why. It helps it to move some of the struggle. And through. when you get up and teach, do you say, I'm dedicating this to my sister? Or is that what a I private will, thing you do? I, what I will do is, is I will say, if you want to dedicate this class to a loved one, mm -hmm. to whisper their name out loud. Oh, I love mm. that. And I I'll have too. them place their hand on their heart, mm, and you'll like hear that. people who will say their loved one's name. So let's do that, Heidi. And with you. And you have them whisper. Whisper their name. Scott. Scott. Ella. Yep. I like this. Lovely. Mm. And, and the other thing I love about yoga is you have heart openers. You have things that you do where people, you open up the heart and it, it brings in the tears and it opens us up. Because sometimes when we're grieving, we're, we're closed down. I do. And, and a lot of the times what, what happens in the heart openers is, is I'll have part of the class it comes with connection and I think that's the healing part of it um, and and a lot of sometimes it can be witnessed exercises where we'll witness another person's grief and they'll have their hand on their heart and and we'll, we'll share that um, a lot of the times what what I do within the class is first off getting them present expressing the struggle and then connecting from a heart space. Sometimes these are flowing, moving meditations mm -hmm. um, to open the heart space. Uh, and really within connection, it's all about uh, grace and love and forgiveness. And that's mm -hmm. really within that space of the class. Grace, love, and forgiveness. It's part of the connection. The forgiving is what? Forgiving him. Forgiveness can be of self. Okay. Forgiveness can be of others. Um, mm -hmm. And I also say, you know, and if, if, if you're not willing or ready to forgive, um, you can just say, I, I release this pain. I no longer want to hold on to this pain. I like that. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to forgive a person that may have done something, you can release the pain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that. So what would you do as a releasing exercise? A release. Uh, sometimes if there's a lot of pain, what I have people do, is I'm going to sit up clear, mm -hmm. and I'll have them hold on to the pain right here mm -hmm. in their heart, mm -hmm. and then they inhale and they push one hand out <sighs> and release oh. and let it go, oh. and then with the other like hand that. inhale and the other hand. <sighs> <sighs> now sometimes I'll see people yeah. who are will want to do this exercise where they might be a little, like really angry. They'll be like. <sighs> <laughs> you know, and I'll be like, great, keep going. But again, like using yoga as fuel, use the anger as fuel. I like this. And release it and let it go with the hand and release it. And you can feel it in your body. You can. Releasing. You're moving it through. Yeah, I can feel it. 
You know, I, I'm so interested in when you say the grief and the anger is fuel, a fuel, because we sometimes early on we shut people down and they maybe need to have their anger they need to be able to do it it's, well it's energizing it gets them out of bed in the morning exactly. I don't know. anger is a natural human emotion i think mm -hmm. anger serves a purpose within our grief because grief is so exhausting anger helps us to move forward the trap that happens with anger is, is when it's not released mm -hmm. then it gets stuck in our body and, and creates it bitterness health and, and dis-ease right? absolutely so i believe that the anger can be a powerful trans transformative fuel if we allow it to move through. To move right, through. through and not against. Against, others. correct. So, against, that is correct. I love this. Yeah. So Paul, I had a question about laughter yoga. Yes. I saw on your website that you integrated laughter yoga into what you're doing. How, what does that look like? And tell us more it about that. It looks like after they've moved through a lot of the pain, yeah. after they've started to kind of like do some loving connections, mm -hmm. um, I, I bring laughter um, as, a, as a tool to help them to connect to that, that for more hope, to mm -hmm. be honest with you, mm -hmm. that, that, that happiness can live again. But I do the laughter. Happiness can live again. Yes. I like that. I like happiness that can live again. Mm -hmm. But I also know that some people aren't ready for that. And mm -hmm. I also yeah. say that, that this is something that you don't have to force. Mm -hmm. But it's really just using laughter exercises to connect to whatever it is that you're emotionally going through and allowing it to move through. Like take, for instance, when I was working with someone and for her as she was dealing with the, the death of her husband to, to do these laughter exercises. Mm -hmm. And I could tell that still so much was built up inside of her. And I'm like, you know what? Tell you what, try this. You be angry and laugh. And she was just like, really? <laughs> and she had such a hard time with it because she was always like, well, I was always taught that I couldn't be angry because I'm, I'm a girl and my, mm -hmm. I was always taught that way. And I'm like, it's okay. Just do the like, ha, 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 <laughs> And then she started to laugh. Oh my gosh, I love that. <laughs> but then the interesting thing about it, because there's such a fine line between laughter and tears, right. that's what opened her up to right. cry then. Yeah. Wow. Um, but what was interesting about that too is, is she was like, you know, this really, I, I, she said she was so moved by it that, that she, but she was like, you know, but I, I still, I miss my husband so much. And I, I asked her to share something with me. I'm like, can you tell me like, like something about him? And she goes, well, she goes, he loved dogs and he always wished that we would get a dog together. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I think that's beautiful. And she said, yeah. And she, she's, and, and she came back to me then later another time. And she said, you know what? She goes, she goes, I decided to get a dog. She goes, in memory of my husband. And she goes, and you know what? I, I decided I was going to call my dog Hope. Oh, and now at this that. point, Hope wakes me up in the morning. <laughs> That's awesome. I walk with Hope every day. Uh, and she said, and, but I, I think that it, it helped to first move through some of the pain yeah. to allow that Hope to kind of mm -hmm, like breathe yeah. and live again. Okay, so I'm watching you and I'm thinking, um, Maybe I should try yoga. How, how would I start? I mean, it, you know, I, I don't know. I, as a yoga person who does yoga, I think you would be fabulous because there is a certain connection between the teacher and the student, particularly mm -hmm. yeah. early on in a grief. I would think that that, that I, I think you hold people. You do. I think having a, having a teacher that you really, you know, that you like is important. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are many different practices of yoga too. So I think it's important about finding what's the right thing for you. Okay. I, I will say like things like restorative yoga mm -hmm. is a really great thing to where if you feel like I'm not, I need to just kind of like recoup a little bit, which I have restorative yoga in, in a grief yoga class too. Chair yoga class is mm -hmm. a really great way to begin If people to don't wanna too. get up and down off the floor, that can be a lot when you've had a loss. Absolutely. You know? Being able to, but just being able to sit and do a little stretch for us mm -hmm. in the chair yoga. Yeah, you want to do a little stretch? Yeah, I, yeah. You know what happens within grief? Our spine gets really rigid. Mm -hmm. okay. So we're just going to move the spine a little bit. So just mm -hmm. go ahead and just inhale and bring your chest forward. Mm -hmm. And then exhale, round your spine ah, back. Okay. Good. And let's do that again. Inhale, chest forward. And then exhale, round your spine back. You know, that's cat and dog stuff when it you're on is. the floor, but you don't have to do it on you the floor. You don't. You can totally do it seated. And you I know, love it. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, and that's really an important move it for is. the spine. It is. Yeah. And another important move, 
bring your right hand to your left knee, and then just gaze over your left shoulder and just twist your oh, spine yeah. right wait, there. Wait, wait, you can get, you wait, can wait, go ahead, that's fine. Right. <laughs> You're like, wait, what's right yeah, left? Right. Good, and yeah. go ahead and bring your opposite hand to the opposite knee and then just gaze over the other direction. I love it. You're just twisting your spine. Yeah, You're moving good. the spine. Again, the spine gets real rigid in grief, so we're just yeah. trying to bring a little movement. Well, Paul, you're fabulous. Yes. Tell us a bit about where we find you, because you've got stuff online people could look yes. at. Right? Where can we do your yoga class? Griefyoga.com okay. is my website. Um, I do retreats all around the country. Um, I'll tell you, if you, um, I have a, a grief yoga chair class that's free. Oh, wow. That if you go to griefyoga.com, that gives you a little 20-minute class. Oh, that's how great. A perfect I love chair experience. yoga because my husband's been asking about it because my daughter's a yoga teacher, and he's like, I've got to get Rebecca to come across the street and show me how to do it. But you can go online. Do it online. Do it right in your living room. Do it right in your living room. Yeah. How great. I love, I love it. it. I do teacher trainings, too. Like, if you know of a yoga teacher um, who, who wants to be trained in this, I have teacher trainings also. Oh, wonderful. So, um... Now, do yeah. you have a teacher? Who holds you? Who holds me? I have several teachers that I that I um, that I really cherish. Um, uh, Norma D. Keith is someone that I do that she does Kundalini yoga that I love. Mm -hmm. um, who holds me? I, 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 you know what I tend to do? I, I, I tend to like just try different movement experiences and mm -hmm. classes mm -hmm. that I really that really move me. I, I like, like I. I I do whatever I possibly can, whether it's just free form dance, mm -hmm. which is part of grief yoga too. That's cool. You know, or maybe it's even like going to a martial arts class or, yeah. or just anything that brings a, a sense of movement and, and allows us to see what kind of like inspires me. So, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I certainly have a lot of teachers that, that I, I, I was trained by Gurmukh, who uh, uh, is a Kundalini yoga teacher also. Um, Sean Korn, I was you know, trained by her and I love her. So uh, I, I, uh, I believe there are many um, powerful gurus and, mm -hmm. and ways to move and I'm always just open to finding and learning more. Okay, wherever I live, how can I find them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. how, how do you find them in your neighborhood? You know, how would I, how, what would you say if I lived in, uh, Iowa or something, and I wanted to find out it's somebody in my neighborhood. How can I think I, do I just, that? you know what I do? I just start asking around. Mm -hmm. I just put it out there vocally. I'm like, you know, I, this is kind of what I'm interested in doing. And then all of a sudden, some, somebody will share something. Oh, we have a really great movement class, yoga teacher, or something like that. And that kind of opens it up. I just start to share and talk and, about. And, and I think it's really important for people out there to know that you don't have to be flexible and limber mm -hmm. to do yoga, because I think people are really intimidated to go to that first class. Right. Because they think, well, I'm not a yogi, and I don't know how to do this. And you don't have to know, right? That is correct. Well, and I was so conscious about that, uh -huh. that my whole practice is not about physical flexibility, mm -hmm. it's more about emotional liberation. Ooh, love, so that's, oh, wow. that's really a, 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 an important thing. So again, I, I think you know, if you're seeking out different yoga mm -hmm. styles, there are some that really focus on power or flexibility and yeah. stuff like that. So you just have to find the one that works best for you. Well, Paul, mm -hmm. thank you so much for being on the thank show you. today and for everything you're doing for your sister and for the world and you're an amazing guy. Thank yes, you. Thank you, Paul, and thank you for building awareness about sibling loss and I know that Ella is your guiding light. She is. <laughs> My little <laughs> and angel. And we want to thank yeah. everybody for watching this show today and now we're going to hear Megan Polis. She is going to sing Light After Loss for us and we want to remind you, Paul, Heidi and I, that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours until you find your own and God bless. times like these when it hurts to say it'll be okay you go along even when you're gone when it hurts to say it'll be okay Thanks to you, I sing stronger. Thanks to you, I remember everything you taught me. 
thanks to you I remember thanks to you because you were here I this I've been changed I've been changed I've been changed The legacy Every hug you gave Every word you say it will never end I know someday we will get to join in chorus in the skies and it will never end we will see you again tears they come but I try to see the sun And every precious moment That you gave us here on earth We must try to look up to the sky And know the reason why You came to the to you I sing stronger thanks to you I, I remember everything you taught me you taught me thanks to you I remember thanks to you because you were here on this earth because you taught us I deserve because you loved us here. I deserve. We've been changed. We've been changed. We've been changed.